what do I always say? Anyone can cook. Well, yeah, anyone can. That doesn't mean that anyone should. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 recipes that aren't as hard as you think. Hey, hey, I thought she told you to follow the recipe exactly. Okay, get out of my kitchen. For this list, we're looking at the recipes for famous dishes that aren't as challenging as they might initially seem. Have you made any of these dishes? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, ceviche. There are numerous ways to enjoy raw fish, but one of the best is ceviche. Ceviche is popular in Spain and South America, is always made from raw fish or seafood cured in a citrus dressing. This dish, which originated in Peru, involves curing fish in citrus and seasoning accordingly. It's the perfect thing to make on a hot day, as you don't need to turn on your stove for even a second. Of course, you can't just buy some fish, smother it in lemon juice, and call it a day. You need to start with fresh, high-quality fish. It's been filleted and pin-boned. Rinse your knife and just slice through bite-sized chunks. Find a local fish market and get their recommendations for making ceviche. After carefully slicing, you'll place your fish in your citric marinade. After about 25 minutes, depending on how you like to eat it, your dish should be ready to serve. You won't be getting a raw deal with this delicious seafood dish. This <clears throat> ceviche, it's quite possibly the best I have ever tasted. Number 9. Fruit Roll-Ups and Gummies Sure, you could just buy a box of fruit roll-ups and other gummy candies for a pretty reasonable price at your local supermarket. But wouldn't it be a lot more satisfying to just make some yourself? For fruit roll-ups, you'll blend fruit with sugar and water, and maybe lemon depending on the recipe you're using. Then you'll bake it or put it in a dehydrator. Put it in the oven at 175 degrees Fahrenheit for about three to four hours. We're just trying to dehydrate this. You'll get the sweet taste of the store-bought ones without worrying so much about a potential cavity. I'm gonna have to see you tomorrow. You have 68 cavities. I couldn't get them all today. For gummies, you'll need to have a good supply of gelatin on hand. So we add our juice, we add our gelatin, get that all in there, and then you're just gonna let it do its thing for just about three minutes. And if you have kids, this is the perfect way to introduce them to the magic of cooking. Number eight, marshmallows. We've always had a soft spot for marshmallows and their sticky goodness. Marshmallow. <laughs> I knew it! What's more amazing than how many we can eat in one sitting is how easy they are to make. You need the right equipment, namely a high-speed mixer. You'll mix gelatin and water and combine it with a sugar mixture. A good recipe will help you with getting the temperature and timing right. Let the mixture go for about six to eight minutes until the syrup reaches 240 degrees. There are also vegan recipes that don't use gelatin. Whether you're making hot chocolate, s'mores, or just enjoying them on their own, it's never a bad time for homemade marshmallows. <laughs> ah! Ah! Number seven. Mussels. Want to look like a true sophisticate without much effort? Make mussels. This mollusk is high class, but not too high cost, and perfect for entertaining. Best of all, you don't have to wreck your kitchen to make them. You can make them in one pot. Buy some fresh mussels, prepare them accordingly, and cook them in a flavorful sauce. A rich white wine broth is a common accompaniment, but you might stumble upon your own special concoction. And I'm using dry sherry. I think it works better in this recipe than white wine, which is classically used at this stage. Enjoy these delicacies right off the shell and see your guests do the same. Just make sure you don't slurp the juice too loudly. Now, that is one lunch I definitely don't want to miss. Healthy and delicious. Number six, crab cakes. Yes, crab cakes and football. Nice. That's what Maryland does. <laughs> Even if you don't live in Maryland, you can still enjoy some great crab cakes. These filling fish cakes can taste even better when made by your own hand. You'll need to start with high-quality crab meat, ideally purchased fresh from a local fish market. Mix it with flour or breadcrumbs and egg and season it thoroughly. Let them refrigerate for an hour so they can get firm. Then they'll be ready for the pan and your grateful guests. Are those crab cakes? Did I not tell you to come straight to me when more crab cakes were ready? You can also make a great homemade tartar sauce with ingredients that are likely already in your kitchen. Just don't forget the old bay. Not new bay, old bay. Number five, tiramisu. I'm just saying we love tiramisu. 
I cannot get enough of it. We're crazy for this stuff. You don't need to fly to Italy for great tiramisu. You can make a great batch right at home. You'll need ladyfinger biscuits and mascarpone cheese, but the other ingredients are all quite common. You'll make the filling with cream, mascarpone, sugar, and vanilla. Then you'll dip the ladyfingers in coffee, such as espresso. Layer these components together and enjoy. Look at the way he sprayed, it's so nice. I think this is the best tiramisu I've ever made. For the best results, make it ahead of schedule and refrigerate it. When you finally eat it, it'll be even more flavorful. Of course, we'll understand if you cannot resist the urge to dig right in. While you ask me for this one and only favor, I will sit here and enjoy this very fine tiramisu. Oh, can I have a piece? Peter. Granted. Next. <laughs> oh, crap. Number four, gnocchi. Okie dokie, gnocchi. I'm sorry I just said that. Gnocchi is an Italian dish that resembles and can be prepared like pasta, complete with cheese and tomato if that's what you're craving. But it's actually a dumpling usually made of potato. While you can purchase store-bought gnocchi, it's a lot more satisfying to make it yourself. I'll take your word, it's a little too rich for my stomach. Still. It's okay, just a bite. Potatoes are easy to come by, as are the other ingredients. Salt, pepper, egg, and flour. Bake or boil your potatoes before peeling and cutting them into four even pieces. Mix them with beaten egg, flour, and seasoning to make a dough. Many, including Gordon Ramsay, advocate using ricotta for a softer texture. Roll the dough into strips and then cut it into smaller pieces before boiling in a pot of salted water. Gnocchi cooks fast, so make sure you have your sauce ready as well. Then drizzle the gorgonzola cream sauce over top. Boy, that's a nice sentence. Number three, falafel. Did you say you'd feel awful? Or falafel. I said feel awful, but tell me more about this falafel idea. Falafel is a dish bursting with so much flavor, you might think it requires an incredible amount of culinary skill to pull off. Are you even interested in falafel? But all you need are some chickpeas and a well-stocked spice rack. To prepare, you'll soak dried, not canned chickpeas for up to 12 hours before draining and washing them off. Then, you'll blend them with your chosen spices in a food processor before putting it in a bowl mixed with baking soda and chickpea flour. Finally, you'll refrigerate for up to an hour and shape. Make sure your food processor can blend the ingredients without turning them into a puree. Put in a pita pocket or another vessel and drizzle with a flavorful yogurt sauce. Falafel. It's not awful. And this is it for our falafel party for today, you guys. This is how we falafel the real deal. Number two, risotto. We've seen many chefs struggle to make risotto on Hell's Kitchen, but it's not so difficult to make when you don't have a world-famous chef yelling at you. Hey, hey, all of you, taste that. Hurry up, hurry up! Risotto isn't a dish you can just throw in the oven, but if you can follow a few simple directions, yours will turn out great. While you can use white or brown rice, tradition calls for arborio rice. Simmer a pot of salted water and cook onions in a pan with oil before adding rice. Then you'll cook in a dry white wine before the liquid is all absorbed. Next, add the hot water, three quarters of a cup at a time. The most important thing is to keep stirring until the rice is creamy, not runny or mushy. I hate waiting. That's why I hate risotto. Even mushroom risotto? What do you think? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, ice cream and sorbet. Ice cream and sorbet can feel like magic, especially on a hot day. And while we hate to spoil your sense of wonder, making them is a lot easier than you might have been led to believe. For ice cream, you just need to mix a custard and freeze it. Now, just like sorbet, ice cream should be hardened in the freezer for at least a couple of hours before serving. To make the job easier, get an ice cream maker to handle the hard work for you. This one is great. I'm really glad that I got this, to be honest with you. I know it's a big, you know how I am with the whole being extra, but turn it to the manufacturer's directions. This one, you'd literally just pour it in there and it's literally makes it. You don't need to freeze the base because it freezes itself. You can easily make sorbet by blending frozen fruit. With both of these cold desserts, the options for flavors are endless. And you can even take things in a more savory direction with recipes like tomato sorbet or even ghost pepper ice cream. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.